You're going to cut near the bottom on both sides. And when you're done and you have the scrap, you want to go ahead and minimize that scrap as much as possible so that at the end of the job you don't have a large ball of tangled bands. When laying pavers, first we need to create the parallel reference line. This is done parallel to the garage slab because the curb is not usually parallel. If you begin laying pavers at the curb, the pavers will meet the garage slab at an angle. This is a focal point, so there should be full pavers parallel to the garage with the cuts down by the curb instead. So now that we need to snap our parallel reference line. We'll choose a number 14 feet. So you want to hold your tape measure. We're choosing this number 14 feet because we know the length from our garage slab to street curb is 16 feet. We don't want it right up against our street curb, but we want it close enough so that we'll be able to straddle the laying edge and the street curb while we're laying. Now, as you can see, the mark is on 15 feet. That's because he's holding the tape measure 12 inches beyond the curb in order to give us a more accurate measurement. Now let's go ahead and do the same thing with the other side. I'll go ahead and snap it. Now we'll go ahead and we'll snap our reference line for our soldier course on this side of the driveway. We're doing this because we've created a flare toward the end of the driveway and we need something that gives us a right angle against our parallel reference line. We'll move the chalk line a quarter inch off of our pavers just to give us a little leeway when laying. Different manufacturing methods for clay pavers include extruded, molded, and dry press pavers. Clay pavers can feature beveled edges, square edges, and spacer nibs, plus their sizes may vary due to the manufacturing process. The different size dimension classifications of clay pavers are PX, PS, and PA. PX pavers feature the tightest dimensional tolerances of plus or minus 1 8 inch up to 8 inch dimensions. This will be the easiest of the clay pavers to install and generally can be laid in any pattern. PS pavers have a less exact dimensional tolerance of plus or minus a quarter inch up to 8 inch dimensions. PA pavers provide no specifications for dimensional tolerance and are typically made to look rustic for aesthetics and antique settings. PS and PA pavers can be laid in bonded patterns like herringbone and basket weave, but switching to a running bond, 45 degree running bond, 45 degree chevron, or stack bond will allow for tighter joints with better visual appearance by eliminating long bond lines. Create a right angle and lay out a mock-up of the pavers. It is important when creating a module that you lay the mock-up in the exact pattern the pavers will be laid. Once the pavers in the module have been laid tight, measure the module. Create the grid pattern using the largest grid measurement, which is 35 and 7 8 inch. This guarantees the grid layout on the bedding sand will allow for straight bond lines. Ideal spacing between each paver is 1 8 inch plus or minus 1 16th. Due to the dimensional variances in clay pavers and also for the lack of spacer nibs, add 3 8 to half inch to allow for spacing. This will bring the measurement of the module to 36 and a quarter inches. Now that we've found the dimensions of the module, we need to calculate where the grid lines will go on the actual project. Take the module dimension of 36 and a quarter inches and add 12 inches for the tape measure extension. This will give us the first grid line location. From there, continue adding module dimensions. Doing this now allows a quick reference for the people snapping the chalk lines. Start with the tape measure on one of the reference lines that has already been snapped in the sand. To eliminate any error that may be caused from the tip of the tape measure, start the measurement at the 12 inch mark. Add one module to this for a total of 48 and a quarter inches. This is where the first chalk line will go in the sand. Continue adding modules as before until you cover the entire project. First work vertically, then horizontally. We're going to start installing the clay pavers along our parallel reference line. The purpose of our module lines that we snapped on the sand are that as the laying edge advances, we have reference points that we can meet. This will minimize any type of pinching or getting off track.
When you're working with clay, it's important that you stage your palettes accordingly so that you can pull individually off of each palette at the same time, mixing palettes. You never want to lay strictly from one palette because the colors are not blended. Here's an example of why blending is so important. If we were just to lay just these bands, what we would find is we would have large areas of dark, large areas of lighter colors. The bands need to be mixed with one another so that that does not occur. What we're going to do now is begin to backfill behind our parallel reference line. Now we're going to mark for our soldier course. Let's go ahead and pull this line about an eighth inch off the paver. This will give us a little leeway in case we have not such a straight curb right here. Are you good? good. Okay, I'm going to snap it. Now we're going to go ahead and we're going to mark our scrap. When you find yourself with a small cut such as this, which we would call a sliver, it's a good idea sometime to remove this cut and actually change the pattern to give us a larger piece. In this instance, I'm going to insert a half farther up in the pattern so that we can use a full one back here. We're going to start installing the soldier course right now and we're going to install it tight to our curb but as we've discussed earlier we gave ourselves a little bit of leeway in case the curb is wavy so we'll install first tight to the curb and then we'll adjust with the string line to make sure our lines are straight and pull everything tight. On this section of our driveway We've noticed after we put the soldier course in that we're sitting slightly low. The rest of our driveway we have sitting slightly high, just a little patch here that's sitting low. What we're going to do is make this repair now before we go on any further. Now what we're going to do is we're going to adjust our bond line for our soldier course and we're going to put our string line on the farthest extended soldier course into the field because we know this one cannot move back at all. Okay, now we'll adjust accordingly. If the void is large between the soldier course and edge restraint or curbing, use the largest aggregate available on site to start filling the void, and then finish with coarse sand. This provides a structural lockup of the void and prevents washout better than just using coarse sand. Now you can see we have a gap in between some of our pavers in the soldier course. Now I'll go ahead and just snug them up with my boot. Now we're just going to try to minimize some of these larger gaps we have just by walking up, finding them, and kicking them a little tighter with your boot. Now that we have our driveway squared up, we want to start moving down the driveway and we're going to lay in the pyramid method where our farthest point out in the driveway will be centered and we'll work down both sides, keeping both sides equal to the other until we reach the end of the driveway. When handling clay pavers, it is important to wear gloves or finger tape. The correct way of laying pavers is thumb to the inside, fingers out. When your thumb is to the inside, your fingers, arm, and wrist are more capable of holding the paver into the pattern. When you're ready to set the paver, slowly release pressure from your fingers and the paver will slide into place. Doing this correctly eliminates displacement of the sand and reduces wide joints. If you were to turn your fingers in, not only do you have a better chance of hurting them, but your thumb cannot support the paver and it will drop unevenly into the sand causing disruption, wider joints, and more passes with the compactor. Pavers without spacer nibs should be laid using the loose lay technique to allow for needed spacing. 
Pavers laid too tightly are a major cause of chippage and damage. The paver runner is responsible for making sure the pavers are stacked properly and evenly spaced and oriented for the paver setter to maintain an even pyramid and laying phase during installation. The reason why we're setting our pavers and moving uphill is we want gravity to work with us and keep the pavers and bond lines tight. If we had worked vice versa and we're working downhill, every time we stepped on a paver, twisted, we would open up the bond lines. Whenever you're working with clay, it's important to check the bond lines often with string. So what we're going to do is we're going to check a bond line right around this area of our project and then another four feet in, you want to proceed every four feet checking your bond lines. Little trick to make sure that the string line sits above the pavement and doesn't get caught in any ridges that might have occurred is to have it sit on top of a spike. In this case, we have purposely skewed the lane so we are able to demonstrate how to fix it. We noticed as we approached the garage slab that our bond lines were starting to shift in that direction. Just to verify that, we're going to take a measurement off of the garage slab and we're using a straight edge here to measure from. We get a measurement of two and a half inches to the garage slab. If we go all the way down, we find that we're almost at three inches now. So what has happened is our bond lines have twisted in this direction and begin to sink that way. So we're going to stop at this point and readjust. Another way of just checking how far we've moved is we're going to run a string line down a center bond line and see how far we've shifted in this direction. And as you can see what's happened, we run pretty straight until about this point and then everything starts shifting in that direction. By the end, we're almost an inch and a half past where we need to be. So the way we're going to repair this so we're going to pull back about a foot of our pavers and then get everything tight and then we'll start adjusting everything back in this direction to straighten up those bond lines. The first thing we'll do is we'll tap all of our pavers to get them tight. The next thing we'll do is we'll run string lines along our bond lines and adjust to the string line. And again you can see just about where we diverge is right here. So we'll just adjust everything over. To ensure that our open area here doesn't change around our obstacle, we're going to drop in a couple halves and any of our cut pieces from scrap when we've been cutting prior to this. We'll shim it so that everything is really tight and we don't have to worry about this moving on us. Later, after we finish adjusting, we'll pull all of these pieces out. Okay, now we're going to go and try to close this gap a little bit. We're always going to stand on the pavers that you don't want to move so that your own weight holds them in place.
Now we'll do a quick check just to see if our repair was accurate. At one end, we're at 10 and 15 sixteenths. And at this end, we are at 10 and 15 sixteenths. Now we'll go ahead and we'll just clean up all of those bond lines. Whenever you're planning on branching out at a right angle from your field of pavement, you need to snap a line on your sand to be a new reference line. In this instance, in our project, we have this radius curve that extends outward at a right angle from our field of pavement. In many instances, though, you'll have a walkway, possibly, that could go to a door. Anytime this occurs, though, you need to snap a new reference line. So what we'll do is, we'll choose a reference line in the center of where we're going to branch out. We'll just say this one right here. And we'll follow it back to this end of our driveway. And we'll take a measurement how far it is away from our garage slab. Now we're starting our measurement on the 12 inch mark. Our measurement comes to 50 and 3 quarters. Now we'll walk down here. Fifty and three quarters. Next, we'll continue and we'll make our mark out into the sand at fifty and three quarters. Good. This will be our mark where we'll snap our chalk line. Now we're ready to continue laying along our new bond line. In this example, we went a little bit too far. We brought our laying edge a little too far out and we went beyond where we have a foundation behind us. So what we did was we pulled up the pavers where we went beyond. We're going to tap them just so they're snug right now. When laying your pavers around an obstacle, it's important to connect both laying faces as soon as possible. This lessens the chance that any bond lines are going to drift.